Picking back up uh, where we left off on the last video, we really highlighted right here undoubtedly one of the most powerful tools you're going to have in this chapter. It's a wonderful way to tell if a series will diverge. It's going to come to your rescue when you deal with some very difficult problems. Uh, this is going to be a, a huge help for you. If the limit is n goes to infinity of that nth term of the sequence uh, does not equal zero, if the limit uh, does not equal zero, then you can definitely say that that series diverges. This is known as the nth term test for divergence. It's important to remember the name of this uh, you know, reason that we can make this statement. It's a very powerful you know, corollary. You could even call it a theorem. A corollary is a statement that follows after a theorem. Also equally as important, it's very important for you to realize that if the limit of that nth term does equal zero, then we don't know if the series will converge or diverge. Sometimes it will converge, sometimes it will diverge. Uh, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, if you do get the limit of the nth term equaling zero, you will need to investigate further. And with that in mind, we can come to this very bottom and it says, uh, you know, just make a statement. Is this convergent, divergent, or further investigation that is needed? Uh, take a look here. We're going to use this nth term test to see. I'm going to take the nth term. And let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of n all over 4n minus 8. And by n behavior... I hope you can see that this minus 8 is inconsequential. The ends would cancel. You're going to arrive at 1 fourth. That means that this is not equal to 0. We can say that this series right here diverges. Why does it diverge? By the nth term test for divergence. Take a look at this next follow-up. The limit is n goes to infinity of 1 all over the cube root of n. Well, you know, your denominator is going to get very, very large. Uh, 1 over something large is going towards 0. We don't know what's going on. When the nth term's limit arrives at 0, we're going to say further investigation is needed. We're going to get to our next lesson, our next section. We're going to learn a way how we can tell what's happening. Uh, but for the moment, we'll say we don't know. By the way, we've got a wonderful simple test. Uh, you'll be able to know that this series actually diverges in a matter of seconds. Uh, but for right now, we'll say further investigation. Uh, limit is n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. In a very similar way, you can say this is going to 0. Again, further investigation is needed. We really don't know what to say at this point. Take a look at uh, this next example. Taking a look at the nth term, the limit is n goes to infinity of e to the n all over the ln of n. Very quickly, you can see we'll have infinity over infinity. Uh, this is very much a situation where you can say, well, I need to use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule, uh, the derivative of the top would just be e to the n. What is the derivative of ln of n with respect to n? Well, that's 1 over n. And dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. This becomes e to the n times n over 1. And now as we let n go to infinity, we can see we'd have infinity times infinity. We're going to, towards infinity. This is not equal to 0. So I can say that this series, e sub n all over L, uh, natural log of n, diverges. Why? By the nth term test. That limit of the nth term is not arriving at zero. I can say that this series must diverge. We're almost done with the lesson. Let's very quickly take a look at some follow-ups from a theorem right here. Uh, we can say on our final page, 
let's just say a sub n and b sub n, these two series are convergent series. Let's just say that their sums are a and b respectively. Then, if I were to take the series of a sub n plus b sub n, you would just simply add the series together and get a plus b. If there were a constant inside either one, if we had c times a sub n, we could actually factor that constant out and just arrive at c times whatever that sum is. In this case, it would be c times a. In a very similar way, we can say, what if we have two convergent series that are being subtracted from each other? Well, then we would arrive at a difference of their sums. We would arrive at a minus b. So how does this come into play? Well, as we're looking at one of our last examples here, uh, first of all, I want you to, to see that this first series right here is actually dealing with repeated multiplication. Look, if, if you'd like to, you could actually write this out term by term to see what you're getting. The first term, you could see that you'd get 3 all over 4 to the 1 minus 1. That's 4 to the 0. 4 to the 0 is just a 1. That's your first term. How about the second term? You'd get 3, once again up on top, but 2 minus 1 is a 1, 4 to the 1 is just a 4. Uh, and now what? We can say, well, what about uh, n equals 3? Well, we'd get 3 minus 1 up here, 3 minus 1 is a 2, we'd get 4 squared, of course that's 16. I hope it's pretty evident as you're looking at this that this is a series that each successive term in the sequence would be multiplied by one-fourth. And uh, what that means is we have something geometric. This is a geometric series. It's a geometric series where r is equal to one-fourth. Now, you might remember that the infinite sum then would be a sub 1 all over 1 minus r. That's on the second page of our notes. Well, what was our first term? It was a 3. And down below, we'd say 1 minus 1 fourth. And we'd get 3 all over. Well, this would be 3 fourths. And uh, plain and simply, we would just multiply by the reciprocal here. You can see that this infinite sum, this first part here, is actually going to converge to 4. What about over here for this series of 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 3? Guys, if you're really on your toes, you're going to say, wait just a minute. That looks oddly familiar. Isn't that the problem that we began with? Going all the way over to number 1, you can say, my goodness, instead of using the letter n, we're using k. Uh, this was example one. We saw that we were converging to one-third. So this is example one. It's a telescoping series. We get one-third. Uh, so what's going on? Our final answer will be four plus one-third. Uh, you know, the four is coming from this part of the series. It's a convergent geometric series. The one-third is coming from that telescoping series. And, uh, of course, if you know that the telescoping series converges and the geometric series converges, well, then your final answer is just going to be 4 and 1 third. You could also write that as 13 thirds if you'd like. Well, one last idea here. If you have a convergent series, a sub n, and you have a divergent series, then, of course, if you're trying to add those two series together, the end result will be divergent. Now, by the way, this first series right here, so very often kids will look at this and say, wow, this seems to be dealing with repeated multiplication of two-thirds. Wouldn't this be geometric? Yes, it would. It certainly would. But look at the second series. This is the harmonic series. Notice again, that a harmonic series diverges. And you can even say this is the divergent 
harmonic series. As a result, you can say plain and simply that this series of two-thirds n minus 1 plus 1 over n diverges also. And that is the end of lesson 12.2.